Hello, Rosh Hashanah is coming up in less than a month, so we're going to continue where we left off uh, last year, studying the laws of Rosh Hashanah. If you have a Mishnah Bura and would like to follow along, we're going to be on Simon Tuf Kuf Pei Dalid, 584. We're going to start from the beginning, uh, so you could either follow along with the Mishnah Bura or you could just uh, listen, and we'll be giving either uh, probably around one or two of these a week. If you want to sign up, send me an email. I can add you to the list, Shaul Rosenthal at gmail.com. S-H-A-U-L-R-O-S-E-N-T-H-A-L at gmail.com So the Shulchan Aruch says, Ein omrim halal Rosh Hashanah v'yom kippurim. We do not say halal on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Usually on a holiday, Jewish holiday in Rosh Chodesh, we say halal. It's a special prayer consisting of many parts of Tehillim where we thank Hashem, we praise Hashem, and it's a very joyous prayer. So why don't we say it? It says the Mishnah Baruch, L'fish ha-sifrei ha-chayim v'amesim p'suchim v'eich yom r'shira. Rosh Hashanah, even though it's a holiday, it's a Jewish holiday, nevertheless, it's a day when the books of life and death are opened before us, open before Hashem. He says, even though we're confident that we're going to be righteous in the judgment, we, it's not appropriate to be singing joyous songs on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and singing this joyous prayer when the books of life and death are open in front of Hashem. And he actually says, in the merit of this, that we're afraid, then that will help us serve as a merit to be judged favorably. Okay. Says the Ramah, V'noagim laimar avinu makenu, the custom is to say the prayer avinu makenu, on Rosh Hashanah al Seder. V'im hu Shabbos e'en omer muso. However, if Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, we don't say it. U'ma'arichin b'piyutim u'tfilos an chatzos. And he says we... Lengthen the davening. Rosh Hashanah davening is longer, and we say piyutim special prayers and other davenings until midday. Says the Mishnah Rosh Hashanah of Yom Kippur. He says on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur we say the prayer of Yom Akenu. Va'omrim tehillim b'chol yom u'misram elahem halal b'yom Rosh Hashanah of Yom Kippur. Shari la'omrim kevin she'ain omros so derech shiur rak derech tchino b'kashin. Now he says here back to the halal. So he says we don't say halal on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. However, let's say you're the type of person that says uh, the book of Psalms. You, perhaps you say the book of Psalms every day, you're a very religious fellow. And really, Hallel, all it is, is a collection of Psalms, of certain Psalms. So let's say you happen to get to those Psalms on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur when you're having your daily reading of the book of Psalms. Should you skip it? So the Mishnah Shabura says, no, you don't have to skip it because you're not saying it the way you're saying it as a way of supplication. You're not saying it as a, in a way of singing and uh, joy. When a person says psalms, it's, it's really supplicating before Hashem. al Seder, you should read it, oh, we said re, you read Avinu Malkenu regularly. So what does it mean regularly? Why wouldn't you read it regularly? Why? Because the Beis Yosef holds, There's an idea that on Rosh Hashanah we don't talk about sins. Yom Kippur we talk about sins. We ask Hashem for forgiveness for our sins. But on Rosh Hashanah, if you look through the prayers, we don't mention sin. So the Beis Yosef actually holds that you take out all the lines of Avinu Makenu that have to do with sins. But the Ramah says we don't go like that. We say the regular Avinu Makenu. So according to the Beis Yosef, you don't say the line, Avinu Makenu Chatan Lefanecha. Our father, our king, we've sinned before you. The Beis Yosef would take that line out. We don't say Vidoy on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, we don't confess our sins. The idea of Rosh Hashanah is that we do tshuva by making Hashem the king. We rededicate our lives to what our goals are, which is to serving Hashem, to making Hashem the focus of our lives. But we don't mention sins. The reason is because we don't want to mention our sins, and the Satan, there is a, a ministering, there's a certain angel, a certain spiritual force that tries to tell Hashem how bad we are. So if we mention our sins on Rosh Hashanah, he's going to say, look Hashem, look at all the sins. They're even mentioning all the sins that they do. So in Rosh Hashanah, we don't mention sins. However, the Ramah says, nevertheless, we do read Avinu Malkeinu. And you could also read verses that have to do with sin. That's fine. Because you're not saying it. Since you're not saying it the way of a confession, it's okay. It's only an issue to confess sins on Rosh Hashanah. Now, Avinu Malkeinu Chatan Lefanecha. How does he explain? The Mishnah Bura says, there's a rabbi who explains the machzor of the line where it says, Our Father, our King, we've sinned before you. How does he interpret this? Klaimar, to say, Avoseinu chatu, our forefathers sinned, she'avdu avodis that they served idols, and we're, we are 
saying, Vidoy, we're confessing the sins of our forefathers. A person should confess the sins of his fathers. And then we say, but we only have you as a king. Therefore, do for us, for the sake of your name. And that justifies the custom we have to say that line of Avinu Malkeinu on Rosh Hashanah. So the Mishnah Brewer is saying that we're really not referring to our own sins in that line of Avinu Malkeinu, at least on Rosh Hashanah. And we have to say, erase and overlook or, or our, our, our sins and our sins. And there are two different words in Hebrew for sin. One is chet and one is pesha. And you'll notice the word chet goes before the word pesha. Why is that? Because a sin of a pesha is much worse than a sin of a chet. There are two different types of sin. When you sing a rule in davening, when you ask forgiveness for something from Hashem, you ask first for the less serious thing, and you ask for the more serious thing. So you're asking for forgiveness, so you ask for forgiveness for the less serious sin, and then for the more serious sin. Yishleimar, Kalei, Hakaf, Bepatach, Valam, and Betzeri, he's telling you how to pronounce certain words. Kalei, it's pronounced. Hataz, Basim, Atar, Fuch, Shabbat, Kasav, Shei, Yishleimar, Roa, Gazar, Benishkim, Ahachas, and Avinu, Malkeinu, when we say Roa, Gazar, Dineinu, you want to say the word Roa and Gazar in the same breath. The evil decree should be said in the same breath. Why? Because we were asking Hashem that he tears up the bad part of the decree, but if there are merciful parts of the decree, that he should leave. Now we said if it's Shabbos, you don't say Avinu Malkeinu. The reason is because on Shabbos we don't ask for personal requests in our prayers. Now even if Rosh Hashanah falls out on Friday, but mincha ain't over Avinu Malkeinu. We don't say Avinu Malkeinu. Achatzos. So we said that you should lengthen davening until midday. That's what. Lechol uh, hapachas at least till midday. He means. Vim chal b'shabes ain't l'harich yerusim rechatzos. He says if Rosh Hashanah is on Shabbos, don't keep davening longer than chatzos, longer than midday. Bechol yachol l'harich. But during the week, you can make it go later than midday. B'med devarim and borim bepiutim utfilos avol benugunim ain't l'harich. He says the purpose of lengthening davening. It's to say extra prayers, right? The piyutim that we say during Chazar and Sashats, the repetition of the Shemona Esrei, those are extra prayers. We're asking for mercy for Hashem. So the Mishnah Bura says the idea of lengthening davening is to say more prayers, not necessarily to sit and sing songs together, right? So he says lengthen the prayers, but don't lengthen the songs. And with that, we finish the first sif of the laws of Rosh Hashanah for this year. Wishing everyone a great day.